Hi, I'm Sean, Service Manager here at Angstrom Engineering. Welcome to another Angstrom How-To. Today we're going to remove, clean, and reinstall a cold cathode gauge. For most customers, it's critical that they reduce their downtime. And this particular style of gauge may need more simplified maintenance than uh, an ionization or a hot cathode gauge, for example. But because you can simply take it off and clean it in a matter of minutes and then return it to the chamber, the downtime is significantly reduced over sending out an ionization gauge, for example, to be repaired. And that's one of the main reasons we like using this particular gauge. To remove the gauge, we're going to unplug the communication cable, undo the clamp, and remove the gauge from the flange. We'll leave the seal here and take the gauge to the bench to clean. The gauge we're cleaning today is, is, a, is a cold cathode combination gauge. So there's actually two gauges here. There's a, a, a Pirani or convection style gauge that measures pressure down to the minus three or minus four millitor range. And then the gauge changes over to the cold cathode side and measures pressures down into the minus nine range if, uh, if the pressure in the chamber goes that low. So typically where we see this gauge indicates that it needs to be cleaned is that the Pirani portion will measure down to the minus three or four range and then the gauge gets stuck. But we know that if we're pumping on the chamber either with the cryo or with the turbo pump that the pressure should indeed be lower than what's actually being displayed by the gauge or being transmitted by the gauge. This style of gauge is very popular because you can field service it. So you don't have to send it back or send it for repair. You can clean it and it is field serviceable so that most customers can restore the functionality of the gauge simply by taking it apart, cleaning it, and putting it back together. Typically, we can restore the gauge functionality simply by doing uh, what would we classify as a quick clean, and that's what we're going to demonstrate today. So we're going to simply take it apart, clean the chamber, and put it back together again. And in most cases, we find that this will restore the gauge functionality. In some cases, on a combination gauge like this, depending on the age, we find that it may need more than just a simple cleaning. And there are kits, parts available to replace some of the other items in the gauge that may be needed to restore the functionality. Once you have the gauge off the chamber, we're going to make considerations for working with an item that's in vacuum. We're gonna wear appropriate uh, gloves, long sleeves. Uh, because the gauge has been exposed to whatever you've been using in the chamber for materials, the individual cleaning the gauge may want to make consideration for wearing something like uh, a full respirator or even just a standard dust mask to prevent the inhalation of particulate while we are cleaning the gauge. Most cold cathodes have a very strong magnet. This particular gauge has a warning symbol on it if you find that uh, you're susceptible to strong magnetic fields, perhaps from a pacemaker, uh, then consideration should be made for your safety in terms of working with the gauge. For us, if customers aren't comfortable cleaning the gauge themselves, they're welcome to return it to us and we'll do the cleaning for them free of charge. If you're considering cleaning the gauge yourself, make sure you follow any internal protocol that may be applicable in terms of health and safety while you clean the gauge. Different gauges may require different sets of tools to disassemble them. You may want to consider following the manufacturer's recommended guidelines for cleaning the tool itself. Most manufacturers will include uh, some instructions on how to clean their particular gauge. Those instructions may be slightly different than the procedure we're going to follow today. However, the procedure outlined here should be quite similar for most standard cold cathode gauges. Okay, here are the tools we're gonna to use. We've got uh, an Allen key, wrench, circlip pliers, screwdriver, 
some sandpaper and some scotch Brite. We've got some extra scotch Brite as needed. Those are the tools that we're going to use today to clean this gauge. Once you've removed the gauge, just be aware while you're working on it of the seal face on the gauge itself. We we'll want to make sure we protect that or, or ensure that we don't scratch or damage that seal face while we're working on the gauge. Let's go ahead and take this gauge apart. The first thing we'll do is remove the electronics. You need to make sure they come off straight. We'll set those aside. The next thing we're going to do is remove the magnet. You'll notice that this is a little bit tricky because the magnet is quite strong. We're removing the magnet primarily because it actually affects the tools when we're trying to work on the gauge. As you can see, it's difficult to get the wrench to turn the bolt because of the strong magnetic field. So for those of you who are wondering, if we're gonna clean the inside of the gauge, why are we taking the magnet off? That's why. You can see this is a very strong magnet. So now we have the chamber of the gauge itself. Inside we have a pole piece that we're gonna remove. It's held in place by a circlip. We'll use our circlip pliers to carefully remove the circlip. And then hopefully the pole piece slides out. This is a change to the original video where previously I had recommended cleaning the gauge chamber with it intact. Um, lately I've been recommending that instead of doing it that way, we take the gauge completely apart. Um, we were finding that in some cases it was possible to bend or damage the pin and by taking the gauge chamber apart it's a little bit more work but it will eliminate that possibility. We also find that the chamber itself comes out a little bit cleaner and it's much easier to clean the pin off as well which can make a difference in whether the gauge works better, uh, longer, uh, behaves after the cleaning. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart. We're going to remove the orange cap. There's three screws here. Take the orange cap off. So we have, in this case, the Pirani tube just pulls out. There's an O-ring there. The pin in the middle, there's an O-ring underneath and a Teflon piece that's encapsulated around the pin itself. These can be a little bit tight, but if you pull and you wiggle, the pin will come out. There's an O-ring inside here. Normally, I leave the O-ring in place. There's also a little aluminum spacer, so you have to be careful that spacer likes to fall out and run away. In this case, I'm going to leave the O-ring in place. If you want, you can pry it out. Just make sure you use something plastic to take it out so that you don't scratch the seal face for the O-ring inside the gauge chamber itself. So now, basically, the gauge chamber has nothing connected to it. And I'm going to go ahead and clean it. In this case with sandpaper, I am finding that in some cases the scotch Brite isn't aggressive enough to clean the gauge if it's really dirty. So sandpaper, in this case I'm using 180 grit. It's fairly aggressive, but it is a stainless steel chamber. And we're going to go and simply polish the inside. You can see I got a little bit sort of bent over to get into the bottom and try and get the bottom surface of the chamber. And you can see typically that there is some discoloration and we want to get this 
so that it's stainless steel looking, it's shiny and new looking like basically the outside of the tube so that all of that staining is removed. In this case I've got kind of a ring around the outside I just sort of shift my finger and focus on cleaning that area on the bottom. It's pretty easy to get the side cleaned. The bottom is kind of the tough part. Not too bad. I'm going to do a little bit more. Usually you don't need more than one piece of sandpaper unless it's really dirty but even still And that's it. So in this case, um, actually what I'm going to do now is clean the pin. This pin is slightly discolored, but it's not too bad. In some cases, it'll be discolored all the way down to the bottom. There is a very small uh, ignition aid clip on this pin, and it's very important that it doesn't get disturbed. Uh, one of the mistakes I've made and I've seen other people or heard other people making is that they'll clean the pin off afterwards with a cloth and the cloth will get caught on the little clip on the on the pin so you need to be careful when you when you finish to not do that we'll just take some sandpaper here and scrub the end of the pin being careful not to disturb the clip and again we want it to be you know basically shiny and steel-like without any discoloration. That's that. I'm going to go ahead and give it a wipe. Again, just be careful with the clip. You can blow these off as well with some compressed air. That works well. Um, in this case, they're not too bad. Now some people might be concerned that the o-ring gets a bit dirty. Normally not, and normally it's fine. I just leave it as it is. Um, and then we can reassemble the gauge chamber itself. So it's important to make sure that when you put this little spacer in, that it is inside the o-ring. I have had gauges come back from customers where they've attempted to repair it, and that spacer was on top of the o-ring, so then it didn't seal correctly. So just make sure it's in the middle. We'll pop the pin back in. The Pirani tube, sometimes we'll have some particulate. You can actually clean these as well. You can put some alcohol in them and clean them out. Usually they're fine. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as is and push it in. Now you can see here the o-ring in some cases on the prani tube will stick out a little bit on the side. If it sticks out a lot in some cases it'll actually get stuck on the magnet. So what I like to do is just snug the bolts and then you can use your fingertip and just kind of push it in. You can also push on the prani tube a little bit. Kind of just work that o-ring inside a little bit and then whoops finish tightening up the screws and the ideal is that you don't see any of the o-ring on the side I've got a tiny bit there but I think that's okay we'll do the fasteners up snug And that's it. And we're ready to put uh, the pole piece back in and finish the assembly of the gauge. I'm going to set that aside. The pole piece you can clean a number of different ways. Sometimes these are really heavily discolored. You may find that you need to use some sandpaper instead of Scotch-Brite. If you find the Scotch-Brite isn't very effective and, the, and it's not coming to a nice clean finish, then by all means use something a bit more aggressive like sandpaper. I like to clean the holes in the pole piece as well. 
You can roll up some sandpaper, insert it through the holes and just give them a little bit of a polish. They don't necessarily need to be shiny stainless steel clean, but it helps to, to remove some of the buildup in the holes. Once you're satisfied with the cleaning of the pole piece, then we can go ahead and clean the items and put the gauge back together. At this point, while everything's still a little bit dusty, I would inspect the seal face on the chamber itself to make sure that there isn't any damage. Here we have a few small scratches that I'm gonna polish out. We're concerned about scratches that may be a conductance path across the O-ring as it seals to the flange on the chamber. So when we polish, we want to make sure we polish in a circular motion. And we're concerned more about removing any scratches that may be contrary to that circular seal face. So here I'm basically going to just push the gauge seal face or flange into the Scotch-Brite and turn it just to polish it. The scratches on here are quite light and most of them are now gone just from doing that. Next we're going to blow off some of the particulate. You can use a handheld can of air like you would to clean a computer keyboard. We have compressed air so I'm going to do that. Same for the pull piece. After blowing out the chamber and the pole piece with compressed air, you can consider wiping the surfaces down with some alcohol. And then we'll put the gauge back together. So we'll slip the pole piece back into the chamber body. Reinsert the circlip to hold the pole piece into the chamber body. Then we're going to reinstall the magnet. Once the pole piece hasn't been inserted, you might want to check to make sure that the central pin hasn't been bent or dislocated. It should be centered in the middle of the chamber, and in this case it centers on one of the holes in the pole piece. We've tightened up our magnet, we're going to reinstall the gauge electronics. In this case we have a small Pirani gauge that lines up at the hole in the electronics themselves. And then we'll secure the electronics, the Allen key. And the gauge is ready to be reinstalled back on the chamber. Now let's reinstall the gauge. First, I'm going to make sure that the seal is clean and the seal face. Reinstall the clamp. We'll tighten the clamp nice and snug. and reconnect the communication cable. That's it. Done. Once the gauge has been installed, go ahead and pump down the chamber and check to see that the gauge is functioning properly. Thanks for watching this Angstrom How-To. If there are any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact us. We're here to help.